Hi, I'm Toby Hodges from Yachting World. Why am I lying down on the forward berth of this boat? To show you really just how much volume is up here. This is the Do 441. 40 foot. Look at the size of this berth. And the reason why I'm starting here really is because I think it just shows just how much volume modern design, cruising boat design can fit in, especially up forward. So this boat is really all about this volume and throughout the rest of the boat, throughout the rest of the interior and the cockpit, the sailing performance we're gonna find out, but uh, to offset that they put a bit more sail area, a bit taller mast on there, and we'll see how it works on the water. And this is how it looks from the outside. This is as close to a scow shaped bow really as I think I've seen in a mainstream cruising production yacht. It's astonishing. I mean this, I don't know if you can see this, how well, how much this flares out and how much, how far forward this beam is carried. So you've got a full stem there and then there is a sort of soft chine and at the sort of whole waterline level, but then it just comes out to give you the, all this volume up forward. The mast has also been taken further aft, and that gives you this big foredeck area. It also helps balance the ratio between the, uh, the jib and the mainsail. But yeah, you've got a 17.5 metre high mast there, so plenty of, of sail area which should counteract this added wetted surface. So we've just hoisted this big yellow Jenica, which has helped liven things up a little bit because we were down to about uh, seven, seven to eight knots of breeze and uh, it's getting a bit hot. So we get a bit more apparent wind now and we're making just over seven knots in about 10 knots breeze. Got a bit more heel on and the boat's moving nicely. So this is when the boat comes alive a little bit more. Once you're into the double figures, the true wind, and it helps obviously having a nice big Jenica to put up as well. So we've now been sort of making seven and a half to eight knots in 11 to 12. When it was up around 12, we're sitting at eight knots. And you feel a lot more power and connection once she's healed like this as well. It's good fun for a voluminous boat sailing well. Nice. The evening breeze is filled in at last. Cooling us off. Healing this do for 41 over nicely. And we're sitting in 15 knots true up to We've had up to 17 knots and we're making six, eight and a half at 115, 120 degrees true. So a nice broad reaching angle. And yeah, it's lovely. Starting to see some white caps coming in. And it is definitely a boat that likes, likes to heel and likes some sail, some wind in her sails. Get some movement going through this because it is a beamy hull a lot of volume, quite a lot of wetted surface there. But once she gets going, it's an enjoyable ride. And nice to sail a single rudder boat again. Just enjoying the last, the last of the evening breeze, sailing back into, towards Palmer and the iconic cathedral, which is a bit lost in the haze at the moment. But a good angle here to see just how much deck space there is on this new do for. 
they fought for space wherever they can get it. You can see the helm here is right tucked into the quarters. Um, uh, and indeed this backstay, split backstay taken right to the very quarters of the boat. The full beam there and that's allowed them to get uh, a bit more roach on that nice Elstrom Echo sail. And you can see how much beam there is back here along the aft benches. So you could sit six there and then six around this big cockpit table as well. You can reach these winches from the helm and just about the clutches as well. But it's a little bit tight to straddle the wheel itself. You're gonna to have to add tail bags at the moment for those winches there and at the companionway as well for the halyards. Uh, they're looking at putting bags on here. Um, otherwise you end up with a bit of a, a snake pit inside and one the cockpit floor there as well. Very flat coach roof style, typical of D4 these days. But with this one, they've added quite a neat tunnel system for the halyards which run from the mast base there disappearing through that part and exiting here uh, at those clutches. It means you can't have a well for this spray hood, but it's, it's neatly done on there. So in terms of the options of the deck, you have this, which is the ocean, which about 75% people take. You have an easy, which just has two aft winches, or you have performance, which is four winches and a single point main sheet, which, point, which sheets down to uh, yeah, a block just after where that table is now, but without the table. Otherwise, on the Easy and the Ocean, you have this bridle set up midway from the boom, German sheeted back here to both aft winches. So you can have your, your Genoa sheets on one winch and your, your main sheet on the other and clutch it off, vice versa. And that's pushed those blocks out, which means you, know, you have these short tracks here if you do choose a Genoa uh, on the coach reef itself. It's not particularly high pointing boat, so uh, I guess those don't really need to be much further inboard. It likes to be a bit freer to get the speed up. Big wide side decks, outboard chain plates, nice clear walkway forward, and as I say, very flat coach roof, plenty of sunbathing area here self-tacking jib rail stays that's a standard that's a standard fit and then the Genoa is an option and then you might be able to see again this just how wide it is forward here it's, it's amazing so those hatches are for the for the forward cabin so that's not a sail locker there is no sail locker you can't even access the chain locker from the deck you have to go through the forward cabin this here is the forward bulkhead of the forward cabin. Just open that up. There we are. So they wanted to do that really, so you get this nice big hatch in the space of, of that forward cabin. If you, the charter version, which has four cabins, this one split, everything moves back and you do get a, a sail locker in there as well. Um, which you know could be valuable I think especially if you're using these furling sails because otherwise you've got to stick this wherever you can fit it really in a cabin but obviously there's a third heads which you could use as a utility cabin stowage there that sort of thing there are cockpit benches and there is a big lazarette which I'll show you back on, on dock otherwise yeah removable bowsprit area flat deck furl and nice to see so that gets the foot it foot of the Genoa nice and low help get maximum area out of that so together with the mast brought further aft you've got a big powerful and well balanced mainsail and headsail and then the anchor roller neatly mounted in there see this volume in the forward ends of the boat So do four reckon they've included 60% more windows, more portholes, hatches, coach roof ports on this than com any comparable models. There is certainly a lot of space and a lot of natural light being encouraged into this boat. 
So this is showing a bit of the transom area here. I can't open it fully because of the dock. But you can see the life raft access central there and appreciate with the swim platform down, you have that absolutely standard do for feature of a grill and a little sink there that you can use fry your fish up and clean up and that sort of thing as well um, so that central seating area is standard that isn't but I mean uh, as Nicola said everyone takes that so as well as having that loads of space to sit on those aft benches this this one obviously lifts up well they both lift up uh, and a step here drops down when you lower uh, lower the swim platform on this clutch here so easy boarding access and then I've just lifted this hatch up here to have a peer in to the lazarette so in here it's really um, extra stowage I guess not that practical but plenty of it in that it's full beam it goes right underneath but you obviously have this piping and seacocks and that sort of thing is here so you don't want too much too many loose things banging around there is access from the aft cabins into this both sides. So that's not a watertight bulkhead. Uh, and you can get at the steering gear, which again, you can from the aft cabins as well. And that's the recess for the life raft locker there. So a nice shallow descent into this interior. And it's, uh, if I hadn't said before, an Italian designed boat. So Luca, Luca Ardizio has done the interior and that's the first time he's worked with Do4 x and outer design um, worked for cnb designs as well that sort of thing in the past but he's combined with umberto felci so felci's done 20 years of designing do four hulls um, very well respected naval architect and uh, luca ardizio has brought another touch of italian finesse styling to this boat we showed it earlier with furnishings, upholstery and that sort of thing on board. This is the bare boat really. Uh, but you can see the lighting, apologies for this creaky floor. Uh, the lighting's been done nice, in, in, indirect lighting and just so much natural light in here. Uh, hull windows, coach ports, hatches. Also good use of that, that white bulkhead as well, which uh, those lines which match these raised lockers. Stowage space is good. We'll have a good look, walk through, good walk through it now. One thing to mention really, I mean, as a standard, you've got a three cabin boat, but it can be a four cabin. So it can be three cabin, three heads, four cabin, three heads, four cabin, two heads, which is pretty amazing really to be able to have two forward cabins on a 40 footer, each with double berths. This customizable area really, so as standard, it's a shower. But you can have it as a, as I say, as a third head here. Uh, the shower would have a, be blocked off there and you could have a rail for wet hanging, which I think could be a really useful area to have it as wet, a wet hanging, shower area, uh, drying area, that sort of thing as well. Cause you probably don't need a third toilet. They're also looking at different ideas for this uh, to use it as a utility cabin because you'll notice as well there's no chart table uh, standard do fours these days no nav station area at all use the spaces as socially rather than have you know an owner who would sit and do do have his own area a chart table but um i guess having some sort of uh, desk workstation could be useful in this day and age all right as it is, you do your passage planning here. Completely new galley former area, particularly with this inboard part, uh, and it works well. On that side there, heads just where you need it by the companionway. Good size as well, does still have a shower in there, and good stowage as well behind those mirrored lockers. Nice wide shallow sink, and a bit more stowage there as well. Loads of natural light, good headroom, at least 6'3", 6'4", headroom goes right through to the forward berth. Yeah, and then this works well because you have a little recess here you can tuck into to work at the sink or use the work, work surface here, a little fiddle on this Corian. And this is 
this brings good refrigeration space as well. So you have a front opening part, which links to the lift top part there to give plenty uh, of cold stowage space. More stowage outboard there in little lift top lockers along there. And say right through the boat, you have this deep raised stowage, uh, which would be really valuable actually. Combination styling, got a combination of the gray, whites, uh, and blacks around the, the hull windows there. Coach roof ports are quite high to see out of, uh, and those are quite low, but yeah, you cannot fault the natural light. Good ventilation coming in through these uh, hatches as well. More stowage forward in those three drawers. And then the saloon space. Yeah, I mean, you can sit obviously six around there pretty easily. This. Uh, still being worked on, but you, know, you can slide that out of the way for, for better access in here. Would be nice, you do have those two handrails by the coach roof, but I think at heel, having having one on the he deck head would be a good idea as well. Otherwise, below the saloon is all stowage. Again, raised stowage back there, and, and there's your instrument panel just tucked in with your VHF and your stereo there as well. Nice, smart bulkhead there uh, looks really looks really nice and this is a bare boat and um, yeah done a good job it's a mast step there for for the mast obviously that's what a mast step is um, but you can see just how aft far aft that has been brought so a good foot so back from the main bulkhead and then moving into the forward cabin which I talked about earlier but yeah you can just see amazing amount of space really for a 40 footer you see the recesses in the hull lining there where you would separate that into two double forward cabins nice amount of hanging stowage and some shelves behind the door here a bit more shoe stowage below wireless charging port there and a deep drawer below in fact i'll just lift this you'll be able to see Deep drawer below this part of the berth as well. Which when you combine with all these, this bank of four deep lockers, raised lockers, I say the raised lockers are gonna be really valuable on this, that go through here and the open ones further. Forward towards the headboard, there's a lot of storage space there. And there's your big opening hatch above the headboard in here. Plus, you have the two smaller opening hatches there. Those are just, if you're tall enough, I'm up on my tiptoes now to see that, and I'm 5'10". But you get some good natural light coming through there as well. And a proper ensuite heads and shower compartment there. I imagine they'll be putting a door in. But yeah, good space, good space. Again, nice styling, reasonable standard of finish, uh, and good stowage in here as well. So the five steps lift for engine access. This is a new feature for D4, having an aluminium frame for those timber steps. Keep it lightweight, keep it open looking. But yeah, good gas strut on that uh, for really full engine access because those big side panels lift away as well. So that's a Volvo Penta 50 sail drive as standard. You can upgrade to a 60 or change brands as well as you want. No insulation on here, which I presume they'll add because uh, that'll help keep the noise down. And I'm going to lift a floorboard here to show a bit beneath. Uh, beneath this sole board as well. So standard finish is in this natural oak. Uh, you change the upholsteries, you can have I think a teak veneer as well. So that's with this sole panel lifted up. So another thing D4 wanted to change was to have central plumbing and wiring. So they have these raised runs out of the bilge, keep your waterproof connections and your wiring on one side and your plumbing runs on the other and it's all central which looks pretty neat from here um, cuts down cable runs makes it easy to access 
a lot of bare plywood when you look behind the scenes. Um, I guess understandable, but it would be nice to see some of this end grain of this plywood sealed. Uh, I'll never understand why people don't do it more, but you know, it only needs a bit of water in there and uh, and it's not gonna look so good after a time, but nice bit of foam there to stop it moving around, although you do still hear it creaking. And then these are double cabins are pretty much identical. Well, I think they are identical really. But good size, good space, I mean, that's, Loads of headroom at this entrance area here. Just reach that really with an opening part there. Plenty of changing room as you get in, turning space. Good size shelving, outboard. Again, oh, look how big the whole window is. How much natural light. Those whole windows right through the boat. Um, and otherwise, reading lights, indirect lighting. That engine access I showed you from the engine room itself. And then above that, you've got the battery locker in there. So three batteries contained between those, these two aft cabins. And then we've got some mechanical access further aft. That one empty. Uh, so from the other side, uh, that one is open and you can see into where the battery charger is so forth and I'll open this one up uh, so off central between the cabins you get access to the rudder stock um, and the steering gear above it uh, and into the actual lazarette and then you can open this one up either side as I showed you from above there's your lazarette in there as well that's the life raft locker just over there and then below these two aft doubles other tanks, so diesel tank this side, water tank the other. 250 litres of both, I think. A bit of wine bottle stowage below the companionway base there. Started up here, seems like an appropriate place to finish. It's impressive, isn't it? The volume on this boat really is impressive. This Do441 starts at 230,000 euros ex fat. So that's for the easy version. This ocean version we're on, plus the options, probably around 300,000 euros on the water, plus tax. I think it's an enjoyable boat to sail. There's plenty of thought that's gone into the design. It's gonna be a really nice, fun boat um, for warm weather sailing, really. And I think, it, yeah, whether for charter or for private use, it's got quite a lot going for it. I think those that want to get the sailing performance out of it really would wanna go for the performance option. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the quick sail tour and uh, see you next time. Mm -hmm.